Talk to us about what you're expecting from this GD report, GDP report and the market reaction. Are we in a situation where good news is actually bad news with the market pricing in six cuts this year? Well, I mean, we all know that growth is slowing down in the U.S., and mathematically it had to. The question is by how much. And I think it all <clears throat> it's all about what markets have priced in in terms of rate cuts. And we do feel more comfortable. Talk to us about what you're expecting from this GD report, GDP report and the market reaction. Are we in a situation where good news is actually bad news with the market pricing in six cuts this year? Well, I mean, we all know that growth is slowing down in the U.S., and mathematically it had to. The question is by how much. And I think it all, <clears throat> it's all about what markets have priced in in terms of rate cuts. And we do feel more comfortable because the rate cut expectations have calmed down a little bit if you compare what they are today versus where they were pre-Christmas. Um, in your mind, is six cuts likely reasonable? Um, we've seen the Fed signal that they're going to be three. The market se seems to basically insist that we're going to have much more than three. In your mind, right now, as we, we go into PCE on Friday, where are you standing when it comes to the cut outlook? Well, there's so many angles to this, Frank, because it's, it's super interesting to see that on one hand, the, the Fed is being very outspoken. We're going to make this pivot. We're going to cut rates. And then the ECB is saying, wait a minute, we're not ready to be so outspoken because the bond markets have already eased financial conditions so much. Last year, central banks, I mean, for example, Europe, central banks lifted rates by 200 basis points. And the 10-year German uh, bond yield was actually down 50 basis points. U.S. They lifted 100 basis points, but bond yields in the U.S. were flattish. So that's one angle of it. But the other angle, and we all know what that is, it's U.S. election year. And when there's election year, you know, uh, policymakers do what they can to, uh, to sort of make, make, make people happy. That <laughs> angle is also uh, part of it. Let's be honest. All right. So obviously a lot of policymakers on election, they want to make people happy. But I want to talk to you about you and your research. Uh, you're currently negative on equities, especially here in the U.S., and you're very concerned about valuation. So, so far this earnings season, with admittedly only a few companies reporting, about 16% reporting, EPS has come in 3.5% above expectations. If we see this trend continue, again, only 16% of companies reporting so far, but if it continues, does it ease some of your concerns about valuations? Does it justify these lofty valuations we're seeing? Yeah, so our concerns are around the index level. And you spoke about the Magnificent Seven again. I mean, you know, we've all been talking about it. If you look inside the index and look at companies, then that's less worrying. And the reason why we're worried at an index level is it's always simple to look at. If you look at the risk that you take in equities compared to a relatively risk-free bond market, are you getting paid off for that risk, yes or no? That's your equity risk premium. It's normal that your equity should give you that premium of 3 4%. It now only gives you one in the U.S. equities. Look at the last, you know, especially the last few months of last year, soaring U.S. equity markets. Where did that come from? Mainly from valuation increases, not from earnings growth. So to your point, if companies can show strong earnings, we can be comfortable. And that is the case for certain companies. But at an index level, it's a little bit exaggerated.